Apple will pay Singapore-based creative for a paid-up license to use creative's recently awarded patent in all Apple products. Creative had sued Apple for patent infringement, alleging iPods infringe creative's patents. Apple Computer Incorporated will pay $100 million to settle a dispute with Creative Technology Limited over patents covering technology used in digital music players, the company said on Wednesday. We're very pleased to have reached an amicable settlement with Apple and to have opened up significant new opportunities for Creative, said Sim Wong Hu, chairman and CEO of Creative. This was at the high point of the Singapore's pride Mr. Sim Wong Hu whose company Creative Technology is at its peak, and they were being feared by tech giants like Apple and Samsung back in the early 2000s. Let us row back to 1955. Sim Wong who will be known as Sim in this video, was born in Malacca and later moved to the Kampung of Bukit Panjang, Singapore. Life was hard back in the 1950s, Singapore was nowhere near what you know of the Singapore of now. It was just after the Second World War, and Singapore was still a tiny fishing village with political unrest throughout the city-state. Sim's family were poor as their father earned less than $200 a month, their mother helped contribute to the household income by rearing animals, and growing vegetables and fruit. Sim recalled that once he was too hungry and tried to eat some of their fruits, and animals but her mother would tell him that. These we could not eat. They were meant to be sold for money. Sim's mother said to Sim. An elder brother of Sim died of fever when he was only one year old, after he and his mother were caught in a downpour. Sim's mother recalled that. At the time, there was nowhere to seek shelter, nowhere to find a doctor. The neighbors tried to give him home remedies, but he died. The family was so poor that three of her sisters were given up for adoption. Things got worse when Sim's father died at the age of 63, in 1969. Sim's mother then went from door to door selling eggs. However, this did not destroy the young Sim but it makes him wants to work even harder for his family. Graduating with a diploma in electrical and electronics engineering, in 1975 from NI and Polytechnic. Sim learned about electronics and engineering which he is in love with. Remember back in 1975, computer were just electronic boxes that could only show numbers and words. Then, Sim envisioned building a personal computer that could talk, sing, and play music, besides crunching numbers. This came about from his days as a member of the NI and Harmonica troupe. Having told a friend some 10 years ago, that he wanted to sell 100 million units of something. Sim's friend told him that he was crazy as Singapore's population back then was just 2.5 million, and that he would never make it even he sold to the whole of Singapore. On July 1, 1981, with a capital outlay of 6,000 US dollars, Sim along with former schoolmate Ng Kai Wah, founded Creative Technology in the form of a computer repair shop in Pearl Center, in Chinatown. There he developed and sold an add-on memory board for the Apple II computer. Later, Creative began creating customized PCs adapted for the Chinese language, including enhanced audio capabilities, that allowed the devices to produce speech and melodies. Shifting focus from language to music, Creative developed the Creative Music System, a PC add-on card. Sim established Creative Labs Incorporated in the United States Silicon Valley, and convinced software developers to support the sound card. The success of this audio interface led to the development of the standalone Sound Blaster sound card. Introduced at the 1989 Comdex show just as the multimedia PC market, fueled by Intel's 386 CPU and Microsoft Windows 3.0, took off. The year 1989 saw the launch of Sound Blaster, a PC card with 11 voice synthesizer, text-to-speech capabilities, digitized voice input and output, and a digital interface for musical instruments. What this meant for consumers was a quality and realism to PC sound that had not been experienced before. By 1990, Sound Blaster had become the best-selling board for PC sound. The Sound Blaster Pro, launched in 1991, soon became the industry standard for multimedia PCs. 
the success of Sound Blaster helped grow Creative's revenue from 5.4 million US dollars in 1989 to 658 million US dollars in 1994. Sound Blaster is a sound card to be added onto the motherboard of a computer, so the computer will generate sounds and music. The success of this audio interface led to the development of the standalone sound card Sound Blaster. It was among the first dedicated audio processing cards widely available to general consumers. Up to this point, Creative sold over 400 million Sound Blaster, and Sim did what he told his friend of him wanting to sell over 100 million of something. In 1992, Creative became the first Singapore company to list on NASDAQ. And two years later it applied for a secondary listing on the Singapore Stock Exchange and raised 230 million Singapore dollars. In 1993, the year after Creative's initial public offering, former Ashton Tate CEO, Ed Esper joined Creative Labs as CEO, to assemble a management team to support the company's rapid growth. Esper brought in a team of U.S. executives, including Rich Buchanan, Graphics, Gail Pomerantz, Marketing, and Rich Sorkin, Sound Products, and later Communications, OEM and Business Development. This group played key roles in reversing a brutal market share decline caused by intense competition, for MediaVision at the high end and Aztec at the low end. Sorkin, in particular, dramatically strengthened the company's brand position, through crisp licensing and an aggressive defense of creative's intellectual property positions, while working to shorten product development cycles. By 2000, Sim was the Republic's youngest billionaire at 45 on paper. Everything seems to be smooth sailing for Sim, creative seemed to be in a better position than Apple and Samsung at that time. Nothing seems to be stopping Sim, a young billionaire, pride of Singapore, golden boy of the Republic, tech giant. He is so arrogant and confident with himself and his company that he makes comments like, if I were to leave creative and you gave me all the money in the world, I would still never dare to compete with creative in this area. He even makes some snide remarks of the government in his book with a new term called the milieu turn syndrome, known as nuts. So what is nuts? This is Sim's observation in Singapore, where drivers only do a U-turn if a U-turn sign is present. Whereas drivers in other countries do not U-turn, only if a sign prohibiting is shown. Sim explains this as a no-rule equals no-do phenomenon, where this subtle difference inhibits the creativity and initiative of Singaporeans. This relates quite well to most of Singaporeans, as what he meant was that Singaporeans are too law-abiding, and are afraid to step into the grey area. Sim held his head too high and seemed to be not able to take in any advises from his employees. At the same time, former Ashton Tate CEO Ed Esper and Sim had differences of opinion on the strategy and positioning of the company. Esper soon exited the company, followed quickly by Buchanan and Pomerantz. Following Esper's departure, Sorkin was promoted to general manager of audio and communication products and later executive vice president of business development and corporate investments. But soon Sorkin also left creative to run Elon Musk's first startup and internet pioneer Zip2. Creative nightmare come fairly soon on 2001, when many motherboards in the market were incorporated with full-featured sound cards, usually in the form of a custom chipset, providing something akin to full sound blaster compatibility and relatively high-quality sound. What this mean is that motherboard no longer need add-on Sound Blaster, and this cause a heavy blow to Sim. For a seasoned entrepreneur like Sim, he looks at other market that can be tapped into. The MP3 player market. Sim thought. Sim saw the MP3 market a blue ocean, and is ready to open up the market with his experienced team on building sound cards. Creative shipped the 100,000th unit of the Nomad Jukebox digital audio player, since its initial shipment in late summer. The full month of PC data sales reports, from November 2000, reveals that the Nomad Jukebox was embraced by holiday shoppers, ranking first in that month for overall revenue generated in the digital audio player category. Creative see initial success in their line of MP3 player, and this seemed to make Sim even more confident in himself. 
In the same year, Apple also launched the first version of the iPod on October 23, 2001. This is the start of the war between Apple and Creative. October 2002 Creative launched Nomad Register Jukebox Zen Trademark, the powerful and stylish MP3 player that can store up to 8,000 songs, and yet fit into the pocket. With a gigantic 20GB capacity hard drive, it can double up as a portable storage device for storing photos, text, videos, and other data files. On the same year, Apple came up with an iPod with a bigger storage. On 2003, the Zen NX, as it was later called, was released on August 20, 2003, is an upgrade to the old Nomad Jukebox Zen, with a removable battery and a slightly smaller size. Included with the player was MediaSource, the music management software that would be used with subsequent Zen players. While in 2004, Apple came up with Apple Mini. The iPod Mini was a smaller, thinner iPod with less storage, but came in a variety of fun colors. More importantly, it's the first iPod model to introduce the click wheel, which would remain a staple of the iPod design for the rest of the product's history. In 2005, then, Steve Jobs asked Creative to go to his headquarters to present it to him. Sim's men went to look for some collaboration. Unfortunately, Sim was not there because he was in Singapore. And surrounded by Yes Man, they showcased the products, but without a concrete plan for any collaboration and no deal was made. However, Apple liked Creative Design and Technology and decided to use it even without collaboration with Creative. Creative alleged that Apple violated what Creative calls its Zen patent, which describes the way musical data is displayed on a digital music player. Apple responded with its own suit, alleging that Creative had infringed Apple's patents. However, it seems that Sim had won the battle. Apple announced that it has settled its legal dispute, with Creative Technology to the tune of $100 million. What's more, Creative will begin making iPod accessories later this year. Apple CEO Steve Jobs called Creative, very fortunate to have been granted this early patent, in a statement announcing the settlement, and added, this settlement resolves all of our differences with Creative, including the five lawsuits currently pending between the companies, and removes the uncertainty and distraction of prolonged litigation. Sim offered similar conciliatory language, and said that thanks to Apple's huge ecosystem for the iPod, his company will introduce iPod-compatible speaker systems, earphones and headphones and x products in the months to come. But soon after this, everything seems to be going downhill for Sim. It seems that Sim had won the battle but not the war. Creative launched over 20 Zen MP3 players at one time, and they were distracted by the wide range of products that they are having. To name a few there are, Zen Vision M, Zen Nano, Zen Nano Plus, Zen Neon, Zen Vision W, Zen Stone, Zen Stone Plus, Zen Wave, Zen V, Zen Mosaic, Zen X Phi 2, Zen Style 100, and many more, not forgetting the Sound Blaster speakers, headphones, webcams, Vado Pocket video cams, in-person video conferencing, Zio tablets, wireless Bluetooth speakers, etc. Creative is everywhere whereas Apple just concentrate on their iPod. Apple give all their best in creating something spectacular with the iPod, and it gained popularity with the market. Not only facing competitions with Apple, but also, Samsung and Ericsson. Whereby Ericsson comes out with Walkman phone on 2005 and get popular since 2006. People do not want to carry so many devices with them, and will just carry a phone with MP3 function. In 2008, the final nail in the coffin for SIM as Apple launched their iPhone. This is revolutionary, people can now make calls, surf the internet, listen to music, and watch videos on the same device. Now, people do not need to buy or carry an extra MP3 with them. We're born with, we're born with 10 of them, we're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. <laughs> you don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. 
It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so. Sim is too busy creating new MP3 players and did not see a bigger picture that MP3 players will soon be obsolete. Creative then delist from NASDAQ in 2007. Now, Creative is still around, but is only a fraction of what it is worth during its heydays. However, Sim has had enough money for the rest of his life, and is doing what he liked best. He is still concentrating on the music and audio industry. Creative is still creating 3D audio. What is 3D audio? It is that the sound just appears around you but it's not out there. They have some kind of positional audio in it which you can literally feel the music instead. To Sim, he says that it is just like black and white TV to color TV. The color TV took many years before people went with it in a big way. So, now he is exploring a new way to market to people. Maybe face-to-face -face marketing that's like a viral marketing campaign to get people to go out there to test it. Creative comes out with Super XFi, in which Sim says that it is 20 years in the making, and the company has spent over $100 million creating it. What are your thoughts about Sim? And do you think he can make a comeback with this 3D Audio Super XFi system, 